Today, if you'd like to in your Bibles, uh, turn with me. I believe we'll be in uh, Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, probably also uh, Matthew chapter 24. We're going to look at some red letters. How many up for that today? Some red letters. All right, good. All right. Starting out with a question, okay? It's not multiple choice. There's only one correct answer. What tree does bacon grow on? What's that? A bacon tree. Very good answer by, by Brother Lorenzo. Let's give him a hand. The old bacon tree. Actually, it's called the pork you pine. Yeah, yeah, our theme today is porcupines, if you haven't caught on to that. Question number two is, what, do porcupine, what, sound, what sound do porcupines make when they hug each other? Ouch! Yeah, <laughs> emphatically, yes. You know, fun facts about a porcupine is the quills are not poisonous, but they are painful uh, when, they, when those little barbs get under the skin or in a dog's snout. Uh, they're hard to remove. They're mammals. They're in the rodent family. They're not good runners. They waddle. How many of you can relate? You wa- no, I'm just kidding. Don't answer that. <laughs> they're, they're not that bad of a swimmer. And um, the, the other thing about porcupines is they don't like being seen. They're slow. They're nocturnal. They're non-social. In fact, uh, they mostly live alone or solitary lives. That's not that much fun, is it? They got orange teeth. Yeah. But because they live solitary, they have little or no companionship. Another thing about porcupines that I didn't know, another reason to stay away, <laughs> is kind of like a skunk, they can release a pungent smell. Everybody say, ew. Yeah, and they do that. They have a lot of different defense mechanisms. In 2023, the church must shine. We must shine. We must Share the love and gospel of Jesus Christ. And over the next 11 months, Pastor Monty is going to lead us in a charge, eternally focused mission called One Life Matters. One Life Matters. Some of you, that may be familiar because we've emphasized this before years ago. And maybe some of you have never heard it. And you're like, hmm, tell me more, tell me more. Because every life matters to God. Every life matters in the kingdom, right? Every life matters like we're talking with the kids, whether it's a life that's like a puppy dog and is cute and cuddly, or, or a life that may be cold and prickly, like a porcupine. Today's message is called Loving Porcupines. Each month, you'll have a special Sunday here at FCOC to invite and bring a guest to church and learn more about Christ. That's the, the fourth Sunday of every month. We call it Evangelism Sunday. And if that friend, for some reason, can't make it with you, no probs. You can still care for them and share with them Jesus, his good news. And maybe that's not here. Maybe that's over coffee. Maybe that's at the workplace. Maybe, maybe it's in the cafeteria at your school, wherever it may be. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's going to help you regardless to help them because one life matters. Right now, in your bulletin, grab a pen. Maybe it's in the chair in front of you. Maybe it's in your top pocket or your purse. Grab a pen. Here's what I want to ask you to do. Think about one person. One person in in this area, this region. One person, be it a family member or, or whatever. Somebody you know who does not have Jesus in their life. They got a God shaped hole and they need that hole filled with the God you serve. Who is that person? Go ahead and write their name down. And maybe maybe that's easy to think of. In the moment, or maybe it takes a little bit more to think about, but I want you to think about who that is, because God is putting you on a mission, because their life matters. Their life matters to you. Their life matters to God. Would you agree? Yes. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus had critics. Jesus had folks who hated him. I mean, whatever Jesus said, whatever he did, he healed on the Sabbath. He forgave people's sins. He brought newness to their life. Guess what? These critics didn't like them, like him. As a matter of fact, they didn't like him so much, sometimes they wanted to kill him. They hated Jesus. It was a religious spirit. I call it the spirit of a Pharisee. The spirit still moving on the earth today. People who are religious, people who who may not 
take on the new royal law that Jesus came to teach, and that is the law of love. So Jesus <laughs> was challenged by these porcupines in his day and age, in his era. You know what I'm talking about? But, but how did Jesus do? Jesus was very direct with them, was very straight with them. Did you know that Nicodemus was one of these religious teachers of the law? We read about Nicodemus in John chapter 3. What did Nicodemus do? Well, he didn't want all of his bros to know that he was going to talk to Jesus, so he did it at nighttime. And then here we have all of John chapter 3, and Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus new life, new birth. John 3, 16 and 17, and so much more. Jesus, despite how the Pharisees treated him, talked about him, trashed him, did Jesus love the Pharisees? Yes, he did. And what an example for us that we need to love. We need to love with his love. Your love walk directly impacts your faith walk. Why? Because faith works by love. The Apostle Paul put it this, this way. These three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these family is is love. Love's the greatest. Love's the greatest. Come on, married people, look at your spouse and say, love's the greatest. <laughs> you know, some folks are just difficult to love, though, even Christians. In the Amplified Version of Luke chapter 6, looking at verses 27 through 29, Jesus talked about loving your enemies. Your who? Enemies. Frenemies. Verse 27 says, but I say to you who hear, hear me and pay attention to my words. Love that is unselfishly, or love that is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies. Make it a practice to do good to those who hate you. Bless and show kindness to those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever strikes you on one cheek, cheek excuse me, offer them the other cheek. Simply ignore insignificant insults or losses and do not bother to retaliate. Maintain your dignity. This is the Amplified. Whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. This is where we get probably the phrase, give him the shirt off your back. You know, in, in that verse 27 there in Luke chapter 6, the key to understanding this kind of love and other statements about love is to know that this love, this God kind of divine agape love, is not so much a matter of emotion as it is doing things for the benefit of the other person. Love is not an emotion. Love is a decision. The benefit of the other person, that is having an unselfish concern for another and willingness to seek the higher good for another. Some of what I share today is from a message from Sister Joyce Meyer, and some of it's from my gut, some of it's from the word. So, you know, think about this, how our world is full of mean people and hurting people, well, maybe maybe who don't allow anyone close enough to care, putting up their defenses and their quills like a porcupine. Hmm. Folks act mean because they are hurt. They're hurt inside. Maybe they're hurt outside. Maybe they're hurt from their past. Maybe they're hurt from their present. A friend of mine once told me, hurting people hurt others. We could agree with that statement, couldn't we? We do fine when someone is good to us. They're fun. They're likable. But it's another deal when someone, someone who is hard on us, difficult. Luke chapter 6, verse 32 says, Jesus in red letters, if you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? Even sinners love those who love them. Loving. We really don't know how to do something until we become successful at it, until we master it. How are we doing at loving porcupines? Will hurting people ever show, or, well, hold it, I'm misstating that. Will hurting people ever be shown Jesus' love? 
I say, yes, they will by us. I say, yes, they will by the people of God. There's hurting people all around us. And some people are kind. Some people are cool. Some people are flat out mean. We must reach out. This year, the church must shine. And as one on a united front, we must love like never before. Amen? We must let down our guard. We must open our arms as we open our hearts. We must look past reservations or inhibitions or biases or prejudices. And we must reach lives for Jesus' sake, for his kingdom. What did he say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of living. All these things will be added. If we want to be winners, we must win souls. He who wins souls is wise. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send workers, harvesters into the field. It's time to harvest, family. It's time to get dusty. It's time to get sweaty. It's time to get focused. It's time to be assertive. Let's win souls. Our simple goal for you. Look in your bulletin again. See that name hopefully you wrote down or maybe you didn't earlier and now you're like, oh, it's that person. One life matters. I don't know, there's probably close to 100 people here right now. And when, not if, when all 100 of us impact one life, just think of the difference that will make. Think about it. It's not about, it's not about numbers but it is what God said, that his kingdom will multiply. The book of Acts says that they added to his kingdom. How often? Daily. Oh, yeah. Now's the time. Our prayer is, is for, from the Bible, information to become revelation. That understanding happens. Over in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus was talking about the signs of the times. How many of you know we're seeing some of these signs? I don't, know that, I don't know that in the Bible it had anything about that big white balloon coming over from wherever and floating around, but still. <laughs> do, we know the exact, do we know the exact day? Do we know the exact hour? You can answer out loud. I'll, 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 let's try that again. Do we know the exact day? Do we know the exact hour? I like interaction <laughs> to my satisfaction. No, but we recognize and we are aware of the season, so we must be ready, and we must help ready others. Many prophecies are being fulfilled, and I believe we are close. Reverend Joe Morris puts it like this. We're inside the two-minute warning of a football game. We're in hurry-up offense. Why? Because we're going to win. And this sleeping giant called the church, is going to awake, we're going to rise up, and we're going to move the gates of hell. Hallelujah. We, we're going to populate heaven and plunder hell. Because of why? Because of this love of God that cares more about other people than self. God promises all those on his team will win. We already win. Ha <laughs> ha, you winners, you. Isn't that awesome? You go to the last book in the Bible because we're on Jesus' squad. What do we do? We, yeah, that's a good deal for us. And we get to be a part of it. Matthew 24, 10, red letters. Jesus said, many people will be offended. Many people will be offended. People can be touchy. They can be cold. They can be prickly. They're offended, moody. Jesus said, people will betray one another. They will hate each other. In verse 12, it says, because of lawlessness in the land, the love of many will grow cold. Another translation says, many will wax cold. Wax cold. Now, I know we don't use candles a lot like they did in Bible times, but what happens when wax gets cold? It gets hard, hardened, hardened hearts like hardened criminals. The love of many will wax cold. 
In the easy-to-read version, ERV, verse 10 and 12 of Matthew 24, says, during that time, many believers will lose their faith. We can't afford to lose our faith. We must stay on our, on our toes. We must stay focused. We must stay intent. Amen? We must stay passionate. We must get back to our first love, the book of Revelation says. They will turn against each other. They will hate each other. Verse 12, there will be so much more evil in the world that the love of most believers will grow cold. Jesus is not Debbie Downer here. He's warning us. He's preparing us ahead of time for these end times. And since God loves us, he warns us. How often? Over and over again. Why do porcupines need to be loved? They need it more than we know. Well, you may say, well, that's just hard because maybe someone's coming to your mind when you're thinking about loving the difficult person. (laughs) That's hard. It's just too hard, too hard to love porcupines. Well, please stop saying it and start believing that it's not too hard. All things are possible with, help me, with God. Is that just a fancy slogan? Or do we mean that? Do we live by that and and have faith in Christ that all things are possible? If God believes you can do it, then we can believe we can do it. With his spirit as our helper, as our teacher, you can and you will. The Holy Spirit will help you love others. How many of you know what Deuteronomy 30 says? Verse 11 and 14 is pretty cool. This is what it says. These aren't red letters. This is old covenant, but it's cool. It says, this command I give you today is not too hard for you. It's not too hard. It's not a secret hidden in some faraway land. No, verse 14, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. So you can obey it. You can obey the word. That that passage is also repeated, I think, in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. You can do it because success, family, comes in cans. It comes in cans. It doesn't come in cans. Because people of God, you can love those who are difficult to love because Philippians 4.13 promises that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you, who gives the ability to, who gives you the energy to. Are you having fun yet? (laughs) I think I is. You can't obey it. Nothing God told us to do is too hard. Nothing. Loving our neighbor as ourself. We can do it. Now, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, you may have an argument there, but family, we've got the Holy Spirit. We've got the Holy Spirit. Love is not a feeling. Love's not warm fuzzies. It's not puppy love. Love is a decision that makes an impression. Love carries much significance to make all the difference. If Jimbo does you wrong, you won't have warm fuzzies. You'll feel a hot flash under the collar. Why? Why do we get upset when people push our buttons? Because you are not C-3PO. You are not a robot. God made you a human being. And so when things bump you the wrong way, you may respond. I remind you that the key is always to get back in the love walk. Always stay in the love walk. My mother, Thelma, gave me a green living Bible, Christmas gift, 1980. One of the wisest things I ever chose to do was to start reading it as a 12-year-old. That's no applause to me. My mom equipped me. Around here, we're into encouraging, equipping, and empowering, and I hope today's message does at least two, if not all three of those things. Anyhow, she equipped me with this Bible, and I started reading it. And consistent time, this is what I realized in God's word, has allowed my Lord to mold me into a kingdom man for over 40 years. Because 12 plus 40 equals 52, and I'm a little bit older than that. 12 years. Don't think for a second it's 
too long of a book or too complicated, just rise up and be blessed. Come on. This is God's word, his love letter to us. Some of us need to let ourselves, or some of us do let ourselves off, off the hook too easily. We need to step up our disciplines. Stop thinking you can't read the Bible or understand it, or you can't walk in love with your in-laws or your neighbor because their dog is dropping bombs in your front or your backyard. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes, you can do this. Plus, it doesn't hinge on our level of intelligence because the Holy Spirit is teacher. He is guide. He is instructor. The Holy Spirit is your best life coach, and he's free. In 40 years in the Word, I've realized that you can feel like doing the wrong thing, but still choose to do the right thing. Let's choose to do the next right thing. We can choose to walk in God's Spirit. Or we can choose to walk in our flesh or our feelings. If we choose to walk in the flesh, we'll cater and gratify to the flesh and our feelings. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. And staying hooked to your feelings consistently will make you and I internally miserable. Just like that song lyric probably just did. You might feel like doing the wrong thing, but choose to do the next right thing, the next righteous thing. God has blessed you with a gift of choice and free will. We're obligated, we're, are we, this is a question, I'm sorry. Are we obligated to do things the devil's way or even our own way, or can we choose to do things God's way? To say yes way to Yahweh. He's blessed us with free will. And every time, uh, every choice that we make has an effect. Similar to cause and effect, there's choice and effect. Did you like getting good grades? Or do you like getting good grades in school? Sad but true, many cr Christians are getting an F because of their choices. They're failing to choose wisely or failing to choose godly. There's, there's too many rebellious or stubborn Christians. Oh, this is fun. There's so many disobedient or undeveloped Christians. Well, everyone else is doing it. What are we, 12? We need to remember why we're here on earth. We need to remember our cause. What is our cause? What is your cause, Christian women? What is your cause, Christian men? Is it a kingdom cause? Is it every life matters? Is it about love? Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. Not if you obey me, I'll love you. No, no, it's not contingent on our obedience. He's going to love us regardless. It's our heart to his heart. Because I do love you, I will obey your word. I will do things your way. I surrender me to you just as you surrendered your everything for us. Love. When you love and do the right thing and care and share when it's difficult, that's when you know you are growing, you're maturing. It's pretty awesome. I'm encouraging you today. Do hard things, family. Do things that aren't easy in the body of Christ. Let's not be complacent. And as things get easier, as this love, love walk, loving porcupines, you'll know you've matured, you've grown. Maybe you catch yourself holding your tongue more than you had been. Hey, we're on the right road. When people receive Jesus, they receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts, teaches, and shows us when we disobey and sin. And then he also leads us to turn, turning away from that sin and evil and staying on the narrow road. Let me ask you a question. And then I need to probably close. You ever become defensive 
guarded, had a bad attitude, say, with your spouse, parent? People are laughing, some. You know what the key is? Apologize and adjust. You know what the devil wants you to do? Stay ticked off. Hold a grudge. Not let go. Not forgive. Apologize and adjust. Seek forgiveness. Humble yourself. Don't just recognize when you've done something wrong. Admit it. Ask forgiveness to clean things up. Clear the air. Get on a good page together. Get on a good page. Reunited and it feels so good. (laughs) Stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Live with humility. Don't put up walls. Forgive over and over and over again. This is the model of our king. God's love has zero limits. The love of God is shed abroad in your hearts and his love is in your hearts. Anything that is in us is in us so we can share it or give it away. Love isn't love till you give it away. Yeah. A guy asked Jesus, what's the most important commandment? This is Matthew 22. Jesus said this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, love God, love people. This, these are the most important things to our king. Faith works and functions by love. Much like your car or your automobile or your truck works by gas, What's in your tank? What's in your tank? Love. Love is in your tank, and that's what makes it possible for all of us. But when Jesus' love flows through your words, your actions, your attitude, it's going to help others. It's going to help change them, and it's going to help win them. Yeah. How you treat others, how you say things, how it comes across in a message is how it will touch their life. Is it Jesus' message? Are you representing kingdom agenda or demanding your own way? Are you turning the other cheek or turning folks off? Are you seeking God's kingdom and righteousness or do you always just need to be right? Learn to move when God moves. Let's learn to be led by God's spirit. Who wants to make some changes in your life? Yeah. How will you start viewing and responding to those who rub you the wrong way? Who do you wrong? Come on, let's go, family. It's time to love porcupines. It's not, we're not going to be able to move in with them or have them as a bestie, but with God's help, We can love porcupines. We can make an eternal impact, eternal difference. Jesus said, uh, said, it's been said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But Jesus said, I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Every one of us in this room is challenged in our love walk. What am I saying? It's not easy to love everybody. You don't have to say amen, but you can nod if if I'm in the ballpark. Thank you. I'm wrapping up. We are wired to be defensive, but God's loving spirit in us is how we will win and change this hurting world. It's how we will help the walking wounded around us. We need to stop friendly fire in the body of Christ, right? Right? There's enough Christians to turn this whole thing around. As the book of Acts says that, that Jesus turned the world upside down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, man. The change and impact the world for eternity. Yeah. Have you had a season or period of time in your life when you may have lived like a porcupine? You may have lived cold, hurt, bitter with someone. Maybe even yourself. I can honestly say I've been there. It was cringy. It was unhealthy. We cannot live restored until we get that venom out of us. 
that evil. And the key is forgiving, loving, loving those tough people. And the fact is, it's a win-win. They feel better. You feel better when you choose to walk in love. This weekend, I ask you, who are you upset with? Maybe you can sit here with a clear conscience and say, there's nobody I'm upset with. I love that. However, maybe you're here and you're like, well, my, my neighbor Barney next door. I like that name, Barney. That's a cool name. Barney over here. I am so ticked at him. <laughs> Sorry, this is a serious moment. <laughs> But think about who you may be upset with. It could be a family member. It could be a stranger. Who knows? But by the Spirit of God, I remind you, fix it. Fix it. Get back into forgiveness. Get back into love. Because I remind you of your responsibility as a believer. We are to reproduce. We are to live fruitful. Sheep beget sheep. Christians beget Christians. Let's go. Let's leave this place. Look at that name on your paper. Pray for that person. Let's change our area. Let's change the tide in America. Don't be shocked or surprised when a reawakening and a revival happens across this land. Don't be surprised when hundreds and thousands and millions of people come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior because it's prophesied It's in there. And today, we're trying to equip you to get ready for it. Are you ready? I invite you to stand to your feet, people of God. I invite you to stand. I'm going to invite our prayer team to come forward. I hope you're a little little cranked up in a good way right now. I really do. I hope that you don't just walk out of here and dismiss or forget, forget what you heard. Our prayer is that information becomes revelation. Okay? We can love those who are hard to love.